All right, hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we're gonna to be looking at polymer chemistry. So this next, or these next couple of videos are essentially going to be looking at polymer chemistry, specifically radical polymerization, cationic polymerization, anionic polymerization, polyether formation, um, as well as we'll be looking at uh, addition polymerization and addition polymers, as well as uh, condensation polymerization and condensation polymers. Um, sorry if you can hear some background noise. That's one, my chair. Two, there's a thunderstorm going on outside. So that being said, let's go ahead and dive into the first one here. I'll try to keep these videos as short as possible so that you know it doesn't get very boring. Uh, number one, radical polymerization. So radical polymerization is one of the fundamental methods that we use as synthetic chemists to synthesize polymers. Uh, as the name suggests, it involves the use of a free radical. Okay, we'll discuss how we produce these free radicals. Uh, as well as the reaction of monomers. Now, these monomers are going to contain double bonds, and they're known as vinyl monomers, as you can see on screen right here. Um, <clears throat> now, the monomers undergo a chain reaction that's initiated by free radicals. We'll look at uh, the mechanism in just a second, but before that, all polymerization uh, reactions involve the, three, the following three steps. You have initiation, propagation, and termination. So for any polymerization reaction, you can categorize the steps into initiation, so something is starting the reaction, propagation, you're forming the polymer in a sequence of uh, repeated steps, and then termination where you're ending, so you can, you know, you stop the reaction so you can produce your final polymer. Now, for reaction uh, radical polymerization, the initiation step uh, involves the production of free radicals using various initiation methods, such as photo initiation, or you can use chemical initiators. The propagation uh, phase involves these free radicals that you just produced reacting with monomers. Now, how are they going to react? They are going to uh, essentially add themselves to the double bond. We'll look at what that looks like in the next slide, but this will involve a homeolytic cleavage of the double bond. This will produce a new radical on the monomer. We'll look at that in just a second, allowing it to react with another monomer molecule, and this continues. So this step will propagate, hence the name propagation. And this step will repeat many, many times until the polymer chain increases, you know, the, the length of the polymer increases. Then you get to the termination phase. At this point, chain propagation will continue until uh, till termination occurs. I just repeated myself there, sorry. Um, and what, you'll happen, what will happen is you can have uh, different types of termination, whereby the reaction stops. And this it depends entirely on the reaction conditions. You have combination termination, you have disproportionation termination, um, and that well, that's honestly a video on its own. I don't want to... I don't want to start going off to side tangents here. So let's look at the radical polymerization mechanism. So we have our free radical over here. Where is my... Uh, okay, there we go. So we have our free radical here. What's going to happen is we're going to have the free radical basically have these electrons. It's going to essentially form or react with your vinyl monomer over here. And pay attention, pay close attention to the type of arrow I'm drawing. These half head arrows imply that this is a radical mechanism. Remember, typically in organic chemistry, we see arrows that look like this. Um, that implies that there is two electrons, right? There are two electrons that are moving. When we draw these half arrows, this means that only one electron is moving. So we're getting an electron from here, from the free radical, as well as an electron from here, from the carbon, oh, sorry, from the C double bond C. So that's how we form our radicals. Let's clean up our slide here. But that's just a very important note that um, I want to explain because some people tend to get that confused. So, where's the pen? There we go. So once this happens, what we're going to have, uh, have is we're going to have added our R, our radical, to this carbon over here and formed a radical. This radical, as you can imagine, can now go on to react with another one of the monomers. When it reacts with another one of the monomers, again, you're going to have the following. You're going to have... Radicals donated, you're going to attach these two groups together, and you're going to have a radical form on this end of the molecule, as we can see over here. So we have a radical form. And this is essentially the initiation and propagation steps. The propagation step is what you just saw above, so this right here. And it will repeat itself over and over and over again, integrating more and more of your monomers until you, know, you reach the termination step. So your polymer will continue to increase in length until you reach... Uh, the chain termination step, which is indicated over here. Okay, uh, and that's pretty much it for the radical polymerization mechanism. Very simple, very short, straight to the point. In the next video, we're going to look at cationic polymerization. And if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comment section below. Anyways, uh, your favorite talking mustache is uh, done explaining. Best of luck, people. Take care.